there's this very popular test online. It's called the political compass test. And basically, it, it scans on two separate axes from left to right on the x-axis. It shows communism and collectivism to neoliberalism and libertarianism on the right. And then on the y-axis, it goes authoritarian fascism down to anarchism and libertarianism. We'll see how accurate it is. If the scale is correct in any way, I will end up in the in the right libertarian category. I mean, that's obviously where I am. I think the premises of the questions are incredibly stupid. So let's just jump right in. Question number one, if economic globalization is inevitable, it should primarily serve humanity rather than the interests of transnational corporations. Did Bernie Sanders write this question? What a stupid ass question, seriously. Like transnational corporations, which are responsible in, through the use of free market capitalism for the dramatic decrease of poverty throughout humanity are now opposed to humanity? So the, the very phraseology of the question is idiotic. But since they're asking this, I'm just going to assume that their premise is wrong and, and put strongly disagree because transnational corporations have been a lot more helpful to humanity than top-down government-induced schemes. Okay, I'd always support my country whether it was right or wrong. I disagree with that. I disagree with that because what if your country is terrible? No one chooses his or her country of birth, so it's foolish to be proud of it. I, mean, I generally agree that, that it's silly to be proud of, of just where you were born. You should be proud of the country because the country actually doesn't suck. Our race has many superior qualities compared with other races. Strongly disagree because I don't think that races matter in terms of inherent quality. That's, that, that's, that's silliness. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. Uh, I, I disagree with that. And the enemy of my enemy could also be my enemy. A uh, military action that defies international law is sometimes justified. Strongly agree. International law is a bunch of crap written by countries that generally have their own priorities. The UN Security Council includes Russia and China. So yeah, I'm going to go with strongly disagree or strongly agree on, on we can sometimes defy the idiocy of international law, which is a, an idiotic construct in the first place. There is now a worrying fusion of information and entertainment. Disagree. Disagree. The reason I say disagree is because there was always that fusion. We just ignored it until the last five minutes when everybody got mad because conservatives were suddenly creating news. Okay, the economy. People are ultimately divided more by class than nationality. Strongly disagree and World War I proved that that's a bunch of nonsense. Controlling inflation is more important than controlling unemployment. I, I agree with that because you can't actually control unemployment. You can only provide the principles necessary in order for an economy to flourish. The only way to control unemployment directly would be through top-down government control, and you could have a horrible economy with complete employment. That was called the USSR or Cuba or Venezuela until the last five minutes. Because corporations cannot be trusted to voluntarily protect the environment, they require regulation. Well, I mean, I generally agree, but I wouldn't single out corporations there. Obviously, when it comes to environmental regulations, you do require environmental regulations. You have the tragedy of the commons. You have the, the ability to regulate externalities. From each according to his ability to each according to his need is a fundamentally good idea. Strongly disagree because need should not dictate either moral worth or the morality of the thing that, that you need. It's a sad reflection on our society that something as basic as drinking water is now a bottled branded consumer product. Strongly disagree. Why is that? Why is that bad? I'm confused. I mean, you can still get it from the tap. Like seriously, like if you don't like the bottled water, just don't drink the bottled water. It seems pretty fantastic that you're, you can go to the store and buy basically whatever you want. Land shouldn't be a, be a commodity to be bought and sold. Strongly disagree, because what would the alternative be? That it would be all government-owned and allocated by the government? It is regrettable that many personal fortunes are made by people who simply manipulate money and contribute nothing to their society. Again, the premise of that question is so ridiculous. A lot of the time when people suggest that people are just manipulating money, what they are actually doing is mitigating risk and assessing risk and providing capital and liquidity markets that allow you to go out and spend on your company, on your business, or allow you to have a credit card, for example. So. I'm going to go with disagree on that one. Maybe strongly disagree. Protectionism is sometimes necessary in trade. Agree, but only for national security reasons. So maybe disagree. Maybe I'll put disagree because it's generally not necessary in trade. It's only necessary for national security reasons. It's not necessary for economic reasons. The only social responsibility of a company should be to deliver a profit to its shareholders. Agree. I mean, agree. That's what a company is designed to do. It's designed to provide a profit to its shareholders, and that has a bunch of ancillary benefits. It's not designed for employment. It's not designed for redistribution. The rich are too highly taxed. Strongly agree. And by the way, I agreed with this when I was making 50, 60 grand a year. Of course, the rich are too highly taxed. On a net basis, the, the rich are paying for nearly everything in the country right now via taxation. Those with the ability to pay should have access to higher standards of medical care. Well, again, the, the phraseology of the question is so ass backwards because, again, the question isn't, 
whether those with the ability to pay should have access to higher standards of medical care. The question is whether a system that allows people to pay for better medical care also allows people who are poor to get better medical care. Meaning that when rich people pay more for medical care, where do you think that money goes? It goes into the medical system and is then reinvested in drug development, reinvested in medical innovation. So the answer is agree. But again, like you can tell who wrote these questions. I mean, these questions are obviously written by people who are very much of the political left. Governments should penalize businesses that mislead the public. Agree, but it depends on what you mean by mislead the public. Obviously, you don't actually have to have the government penalize those businesses. That's fraud. I mean, if they defraud somebody, you can have a tort suit on that basis. A genuine free market requires restrictions on the ability of predator multinationals to create monopolies. I'm going to say disagree only in the sense that a natural monopoly is nearly impossible. It is very difficult to establish a natural monopoly. The typical way that monopolies are generated is because governments have approved them, is because governments have sponsored the monopolies. The freer the market, the freer the people. Strongly agree. Okay, next page. Abortion, when the woman's life is not threatened, should always be illegal. Strongly agree. All authority should be questioned. Agree. I mean, I think that we should always ask the basis for the authority. An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Uh, what? One of the great misnomers in all of biblical history is the notion that an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth is meant to be taken literally. The enti there's entire swaths of the Talmud dedicated to discussing the fact that this is meant in terms of monetary pricing, that the cost of an eye should be repaid by compensatory damages. An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth disagree. Taxpayers should not be expected to prop up any theaters or museums that cannot survive on a commercial basis. Agree. By the way, that doesn't mean you can't have a nonprofit. Most museums are run on a nonprofit basis. Schools should not make a classroom attendance compulsory. Agree. But they should make it that parents are truant if they do not pass certain educational standards for their children for the welfare of kids. But, but suggesting that we're going to force you to send your kid to a public school as opposed to homeschooling, that's why the question is a little bit vague. Like, what kind of classroom attendance? Are we talking homeschooling or are we talking public schooling? All people have their rights, but it is better for all of us that different sorts of people should keep to their own kind. Again, the way this is phrased is so ridiculous. Well, what does that mean? Different sorts of people should keep to their own kind. Like, I think that people should marry people who have similar values, but I don't know if, they, if by kind they mean ethnicity or race, in which case completely disagree. So it completely depends on what they mean by the question. There's inherent vagary to these questions. And I understand that these questions are designed to elicit responses that are quote unquote racist. So they can label you conservative for being racist. I understand that's what they're doing here, but the questions are deliberately written in vague fashion to elicit those responses. So knowing what they want, I'm going to go strongly disagree. Good parents sometimes have to spank their children. Um, I, I generally disagree with that. I'm, I'm not in favor of spanking and I don't spank my kids. It's natural for children to keep some secrets from their parents. I mean, I agree that it is natural. It is also wrong as a general matter. So I, I don't know what they're going for there. I'll say agree on whether it's natural, but I like that the survey immediately seems to identify natural with morally correct, which of course is silly. Um, possessing marijuana for personal use should not be a criminal offense. Agree? The prime function of schooling should be to equip the future generation to find jobs. Strongly agree. I think moral education is, is generally the, the preserve of the parents. People with serious inheritable disabilities should not be allowed to reproduce. Strongly disagree. I don't know what the heck. We're calling it the Woodrow Wilson eugenicist there. The most important thing for children to learn is to accept discipline. Obviously, disagree. It's an important thing for kids to accept discipline because they don't know things because they're kids. It is not the most important thing for children. The most important thing for children is to be taken seriously and develop actual rational modes of thought. There are no savage and civilized people. There are only different cultures. Well, again, the way this is phrased is ridiculous. By saying peoples, what they are now implying is that if you say that there is a, an uncivilized culture that you are labeling a people, meaning an ethnicity or a race. So the very phraseology of the question is asinine. But if we rephrase the question, this is the question I'll answer, so now it's clear. There are no savage and civilized cultures. There are only different cultures. Strongly disagree. Obviously, that's not true. There are some cultures that suck. And if you don't believe me, check out the Taliban. Those who are able to work and refuse the opportunity should not expect society's support. Strongly agree. When you are troubled, it's better not to think about it, but to keep busy with more cheerful things. Generally agree. It's better. I mean, wallowing in things is not usually a great solution. First generation immigrants can never be fully integrated within their new country. Disagree. What's good for the most successful corporations is always ultimately good for all of us. Disagree because many successful corporations are looking for government handouts or bailouts. No broadcasting institution, however independent its content, should receive public funding. Strongly agree. Our civil liberties are being excessively curbed in the name of counterterrorism. In the United States, I'm going to go slightly disagree, but I'm kind of torn on this one. I'm like between agree and disagree, honestly. 
Uh, a significant advantage of a one-party state is that it avoids all the arguments that delay progress in a democratic political system. Strongly disagree. One-party states are garbage. Although the electronic age makes official surveillance easier, only wrongdoers need to be worried to disagree. The death penalty should be an option for the most serious crimes. Strongly agree. In a civilized society, one must always have people above to be obeyed and people below to be commanded. Strongly disagree. Abstract art that doesn't represent anything shouldn't be considered art at all. Agree. I mean, like, if you give me a blank canvas and tell me that it's art, you're an idiot. In criminal justice, punishment should be more important than rehabilitation. Uh, agree. Uh, although there is a third purpose to criminal justice, which is not punishment and not rehabilitation. It's also keeping criminals off the streets. Uh, it is a waste of time to try to rehabilitate some criminals. Strongly agree. Obviously, there are recidivism rates that are extremely high. The business person and manufacturer are more important than the writer and the artist. Disagree. Many times the writer and the artist are the font of ideas, but you know the market decides all of that. I'm not going to decide who's more important and who's less important, and anybody who tries to on one end or the other end is doing the wrong thing. Mothers may have careers, but their first duty is to be homemakers. Notice they don't ask the question about fathers, by the way. They only ask the question about mothers. I'm going to say agree, but only because I think that if there were a question that said fathers may have careers, but their first duty is to be homemakers, I would also say agree. Meaning that my first duty is to be a father and to be a husband. Okay, my second duty is to have a job in support of that. So I'm only going to say agree because I hold the exact same thing for men. I understand, again, these questions are designed to elicit the notion that if you're in favor of women who have children putting their children first, it's because you're a sexist. But as I say, if the question were about fathers, I would give it exactly the same answer. Multinational companies are unethically exploiting the plant genetic resources of developing countries. Oh, GMOs? No, disagree. Making peace with the establishment is an important aspect of maturity. Disagree. Um, depends what the establishment is. Okay, this is about religion, I guess. Astrology accurately explains many things. Strongly disagree. You cannot be moral without being religious. Disagree. I don't think you can build a fully moral system based on objective morality on pure subjectivism, but you can certainly be moral without being religious. Charity is better than social security as a means of helping the genuinely disadvantaged. Uh, agree? Some people are naturally unlucky. I, I, I don't know what that means. I mean, obviously, some people are born with certain disadvantages, so obviously that's true. If you mean, do I think that there are certain people who are just destined to walk into manhole covers, and then, then no. Do I think everybody is born with an equal level of, of privilege and luckiness? No, so I guess I'll say I agree. It is important that my child's school instills religious values. Strongly agree. Sex outside marriage is usually immoral. Strongly agree. A same-sex couple in a stable, loving relationship should not be excluded from the possibility of child adoption. So the answer is agree, but it depends on the alternative. I have a sort of hierarchy in terms of adoption. If you're talking about a stable, loving, heterosexual couple versus a stable, loving, same-sex couple, I'll take the heterosexual couple because I don't think that mothers and fathers play the same role. If you're talking about a stable, loving, same-sex couple versus a, an orphanage where kids are being ignored, then obviously I think that same-sex couples should be able to adopt. Uh, pornography depicting consenting adults should be legal for the adult population. Um, it depends who is doing the regulation. So my general answer is disagree. I don't think that it should be legal, but I think that it's very difficult to draw regulation that is not too heavy-handed in this area. I don't think you have a right to pornography, though. I don't think there's an inherent right to pornography. What goes on in a private bedroom between consenting adults is no business of the state. Uh, strongly agree. Uh, no one can feel naturally homosexual. Strongly disagree. And again, this, all, all these questions are designed to elicit particular responses. So the idea is that if you're religious and if you're conservative, then well, watch, it's going to list me as a libertarian. You, you'll see. You can believe that homosexual activity is sinful on a, on a biblical or religious level and still believe that people have natural desires to do things that are, that are biblically sinful. I mean, that, that, that happens all the time. These days, openness about sex has gone too far. Strongly agree. And if you disagree, it's because I'm not sure you're a sentient human. The only question here that I'm kind of torn on is the pornography question. And that's only because it's a question of gradation. I'm really wavering between disagree and agree on, on the legality for the adult population. Because again, is it harming third parties? Generally, no. I guess I'll say agree. It should be legal for the adult population. I don't know. I'm really, really torn on this. On a moral level, obviously, I think pornography is one of the great evils in our society. On a legal level, do I think that the government has the capacity to, to regulate it? If you're talking federally, no. Locally, yes. But I think that's true of a lot of things. So they, they, they don't actually make clear where the illegality is coming from. All right, let's see where I stand. It says that I am right libertarian, right, which is true. Uh, it says that I'm 6.13 on the economic right. And on the libertarian versus authoritarian score, 
I am slightly more libertarian. I'm negative 0.72 on that score. So that would put me closer to like Milton Friedman territory. The, the scale itself is really stupid. The reason the scale itself is really stupid and I'm, is because I'm looking at the examples that they give. They put Hitler and Thatcher in the same category. They say that they are authoritarian right. Adolf Hitler and Margaret Thatcher, which makes no sense and is full-scale idiotic. They have Stalin in the left authoritarian category, and they have Hitler in the right authoritarian category, and Thatcher in the right authoritarian category. Like, this whole scale is off. I mean, I went through the questions. You can see that all the questions are designed to elicit particular responses. I just don't think that this is a particularly accurate score. I think the outcome of where I am on the scale is fairly accurate. Uh, although I would say that I'm, I'm kind of shocked that, that they don't place me as, as more libertarian, like based on, based on what would be the question. But there you have it. I've gone through this thing at great length with you and uh, hope you enjoy it.